Hi everyone, here at The New Federalist we are really excited to announce a new podcast partnership. We are teaming up with Europelex to bring you their podcast series on all things Europe. And I'm about to have a chat to Ewan Healy, who's the presenter of the podcast and also a team coordinator at Europelex, to hear more about the project. So Ewan, thank you very much for joining me to talk about Europelex. Uh, I kind of feel Europelex has become the go-to source of polling in Europe. And you know that in the run-up to any election in Europe, you're going to see Europelex all over social media. Uh, can you maybe summarise kind of what the essence of Europelex is about and how it started? Thanks for having me on. I think, um, in essence, what you, exactly what you described is what Europelex is about, is they want to be um, the place for people to get um, information about politics or political system they don't understand uh, in English, in simple language, in relatable language, related to their own national politics, so that people can, um, yeah, understand what's going on beyond beyond their own borders, I guess. Fundamentally, you know, there is a, a European uh, political culture that exists um, out with national borders these days. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, as, as you guys well know, people consider themselves to be Europeans. And so people care about what is uh, the nature of politics in, in countries beyond their uh, or nations beyond their own borders and uh, fundamentally you know in, in a more uh, connected world we need um, better political understanding in our own countries and countries abroad um, both for individuals you know and in the media you know I don't have to tell you how bad so much national media is at covering foreign politics um, and reporting on foreign politics and so we you know we are a, a resource for um, journalists um, and uh, academics as much as we are for ordinary people. Talking of being a resource, so I read on your website that you provide polling data to The Guardian, to CNN, Euronews, and a political Europe found in 2019, you're the 12th most influential media in the European Parliament, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, especially as you're run by a team of volunteers. So maybe can you tell me uh, how you kind of built up this credibility and built up this network? Well, so, to, so uh, our founder, Tobias, started the project back in 2014 as just a one-man uh, job and then in 2017 was like ah this is a bit there's too much you know and he was already sitting at like 40k followers and you know people are coming to him for the news and so he um, then reached out and that's when I joined the team and a and, and bunch of others and sort of set about um, professionalizing and, and making sure that you know there isn't a poll uh, a, there isn't a national political poll that comes out in Europe that doesn't go through our feeds these days nothing is missed we pick up everything between our team we've got about 40 40 of us who work together and 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 yeah, it's, it's a really uh, interesting way to do work because we're obviously all, most of us have never met each other, only a few of us in different occasions. And uh, we all, you know, obviously work from a distance and only relating to people and uh, running a project through Facebook Messenger and Google Hangouts is pretty challenging. Um, but, uh, oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's good nonetheless. And, and what that means is, yeah, we get to, you know, rub shoulders with some really cool, really cool and really influential uh, different people. And and then the way we're able to do that is because we have, you know, 40 people who are, yes, volunteers, but they are 40 experts in their own domestic politics. And they can use that to relate to um, everyone else's politics. And um, we're from all across Europe um, and the world beyond. And, um, yeah, it's a really in innovative and, and exciting way of, of, of running an organization, really. Yeah, all well, those different international perspectives coming together is uh, really, really cool. Uh, let's move on to the podcast then. Uh, you're the co-host of the podcast. Can you maybe tell me what the thinking was behind the podcast? Obviously, this wasn't part of the initial project, but it's come to come to be founded by you guys. Uh, what can listeners expect from the podcast? Yeah, so we founded the podcast uh, at the beginning of uh, December in 2019. Um, as sort of mostly a passion project, really, between a few of us who are sort of like, we want to get and we want to talk, we want to dig deep into these really big issues that uh, are affecting Europe, the elections, and, and just an opportunity to discuss some of the, you know, more under-discussed elections, or to discuss in such a way that it's accessible for everyone, because we know that actually, you know, someone like me or our team or all sorts of people who relate to us on, on social media is people who love politics, right? And I want to listen to you want to get all the latest and understand what's really going on in a country but i don't want to have to listen to you know 27 podcasts for 27 different nation states and so uh what we do is we try and uh, unpack the the politics you know in of, of a particular country in the run-up to an election in each episode with uh, an academic or a journalist or a politician from that country to try and understand what's going on and then on top of that we try and 
uh, I guess, explain to people and bring to people the things they wouldn't normally see, chat about accession, chat about um, the Council of Europe, um, about NATO, about things that people you know don't normally get from their sort of uh, politics understanding. And of course, we do it all in English and we do it all in, in terms as simple as we can come to so that it's uh, whether English is, is your first language or whether you uh, only have a moderate understanding of English, you should be able to you know, get to grips with what we're talking about, the countries we're talking about. And uh, yeah, that's the center of the nub of it. Yeah. Yeah. And going on from that European angle, obviously, when you're giving your polling data for national parties, you often also give the, the party group in the European Parliament that party sits with. Do you kind of think that helps people relate more to European issues when they see the, this link to the European parties? Yeah, that's, that's essentially what we try and do. And that's why we use uh, the uh, party groups as our sort of defining scheme. And uh, we use uh, different levels of relation, whether a party is, is actually a member of, of that, one of its constituents, constituent Euro parties, or whether it is just uh, affiliated more indirectly or, or whatever. Um, and that really helps people because fundamentally a lot of political language, a lot of political descriptors for a party is relative. And so people in their own country will describe uh, their own politics uh, or their own uh, domestic politics relative to the other party. So a party that might be centre left in one country uh, might be seen as, as left wing or radical left in another, or it might just be seen as centre ground in another. And so using the um, uh, the party groups in the European Parliament, we ha we have a scheme of, of relative understanding um, that allows people to to relate to uh, their own domestic politics and you know relate foreign domestic politics to their own domestic politics. Um, you know, I mean, we have situations in Europe where there are right wing parties called liberal parties, there are left wing parties called Christian Democratic parties in different nations, and so if you just give that name, you completely miss the. Um, yeah, you, you miss being able to explain what the politics is. And so many, uh, you know, media outlets will just sort of give the name and think that you can infer or whatever or think that you can use a domestic description. But actually, that doesn't go far enough. Yeah, maybe more relatable then for people that don't follow the politics of that country as closely. And to finish off, uh, can I ask you what your favourite podcast has been so far? What you've enjoyed, what you've most enjoyed working on? To put that's you on really, the spot. That's really hard. Um, <laughs> And you're also expecting me to be able to remember the names of all the episodes that we've done off the top of my head. Um, and well, I love every episode. That's the, the first thing to say. Every episode is worth listening to. Um, I had a really fun time chatting to uh, The Economist's uh, Brussels bureau chief, uh, Duncan Robinson, a few weeks ago. Um, and we just delved into um, some Balkan related issues, some uh, EU foreign policy issues and things like that, which is really interesting. Um, which is a really interesting episode. Also, we've had some fantastic episodes on the Balkans, just because there's been a lot of Balkan elections in the last uh, six months. But there's been some some really interesting chat with uh, about North Macedonia, about Serbia. We've got one coming out this weekend about Montenegro. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of um, really good times. And yeah, the interview on, on North Macedonia with Nikolaos Sofakis, a uh, professor from, a uh, political science professor from, from Greece, is also well worth a listen to. Um, but listen to them all. I, they're all good. <laughs> nice bit of a, a promotion there to finish off. Uh, so huge thank you to you, Ewan, for joining us. And uh, yeah, we're going to be publishing your podcast uh, from this week on the New Federalist. And we're going to start with the one, uh, the topic of the moment, uh, the situation in Belarus. And that will be out on New Federalist on Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us, Ewan, and uh, keep in touch. Thanks very much.